Bismillah, okay folks, welcome back. We're looking at first past the post series, numerical reading. This is book two, short test one. Short test one. Right, my students here, let's get cracking, folks. Let's get cracking. Right, here we go. Question number one. Right, Mark is training for a cross country run and is keeping a record of how far he runs each day. On Wednesday, he has a rest day, so he doesn't run at all. That's Wednesday. In the table, what is the total distance that Mark ran during the week? So question A. We have to question 1A over here on the side. So, what does this question involve? It involves us adding two different types of units. We got, what do we have in the question? We have meters and kilometers. In order for us to add them, we need to make the units the same. Otherwise, you'll make lots of mistakes. Okay, let's, so let's get cracking. So the first one is, so it, it wants answers back into kilometers. If we can do, I think we can do quite easily as meters and turn it back into kilometers, yeah? You happy with that? So what's the, uh, okay, um, let's have uh, Uzma, can you read off the values to me please? First one is? Five. Five kilometers. Change kilometers into meters, what do we do? Times by? Thousand. So that gives us how many meters? Thousand. Okay, the next one, let's have uh, Mr. Harun. How many, how many kilometers, how many meters is that? One. Um, six, six thousand five hundred. Okay, excellent. Put your hand on that. Okay, we're gonna have another go at question one. We're gonna, we're gonna now, rather than change everything into meters and back into kilometers, we'll just keep it nice and simple. We'll get everything into kilometers, and then we have the total, and the total is then go straight into the answer. So five kilometers, let's, let's line it up. Five kilometers. Six point five kilometers, there we go. 6.5 kilometers. Note kilometers, that's really easy to add up. 8,700 meters to change the kilometer, what do we do? Divided by 1,000. So that gives us what? 8.7. 8 .7. And 4,850, uh, divide that by 1,000, what do we get? Um, Three places back. 4.85. 4 Okay, the next one, Maniba, already is in kilometers, so 6.15. And the last one, but not least, is 3.8. So now we've got to add them all up. Make sure the decimal points are all lined up. You can't put extra zeros in just to make the question look a bit nicer. That is allowed mathematically. Let's add it up now. Let's make sure we don't make any mistakes in adding them up. Okay, let's change the black. So 0, 0, 0, 5 at 5 at 0 is? 10. 10. 5 by 7 is? 12 by 8 is? 20. 20. 20 out of 9 is? 29 out of 1 is? 30. What do you do with the decimal point? We go copy it. Yeah. Down and line it up. 5 at 6 is? Okay. 11 at 8 is? 19 at 4 is? 23. 23 at 6 is? 29 at 3 is? 32. 32 at 3 is? 35. Okay, so we put 35 straight into here, and we can put an extra two zeros here for good measure. Okay, that's done. That's question 1A, all done on this side over here. Mind you drop that space off because we won't have space for everything else. Question B, in the table, what is the mean distance run by Mark during the week? Okay, let's have uh, Muniba. When we talk about the word mean, what are we talking about? How many numbers there are? Okay, we just add up all the numbers. The numbers of the total is? So we add up all the numbers which we've already done, which is 35, and we divide it by the number of numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Do we count that one as well? Yeah. As a number? Yeah. Yes. So you got 35 divided by 7 will give us the mean, and that will give us an answer of? 5. five. So the next part is going to give us 5 kilometers. Which you can put right in here as five point not note. So that's it will give us the mean. Okay. Next question. C. In the table, what is the range? This is the question that was you can trip up on a bit on here. Range of distances, right? Let's have uh, Iman. Well, how do we look at the range? So the highest value 
minus the lowest value. What is the highest value in the question in the table? If you look over here in the uh, values, the highest kilometer is what? 8.7. Here, here's the highest value. What's the lowest value? Zero. Zero. So we're gonna have to do 8.7 minus nothing, and that gives us an answer of 8.7. Point four seven zero. That's okay. Lovely. I'll put that in the right place, folks. Yeah. Happy with that. Yeah. Question D now. In the table, what is the median distance run by Mark during the week? Okay. The word median. Let's have Uzma. What does the word median mean? Um, Work out the middle. middle value after you put the numbers in order of size. So you must order the numbers first. You don't just pick the middle number. Order the numbers. Right. Let's start giving me. Here's our numbers, folks. Where's our numbers? Yeah. There they are. Here's our numbers. So we can use these numbers here rather than using them from the original table because it would be easy because it's already in kilometers. Okay. Let's have Harun. Give me the numbers in order, please. Give me the numbers in order. These numbers here. Give me them in order. Okay. First, the smallest number is? 0 km. 0. 3.8. Next one is? 3.8. 3.8. And the next one is? 5. 4.8. And 4.85. Yeah, no problem. 4.85. 5. 5.15. And the next one is 5, yeah? Yeah. And the next one is? 6.15. 6 6.15. Yeah, and then 6.5. And then 6.5. Okay, are, are we happy with those values? Is that all of them there? No, and then 8.70. Okay. 8.70. 8.7. Right, how many numbers? Can you check? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Excellent. If you have 7 values, which is the middle value, Imam? 5. The fourth value, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's lovely. So your median is? 5. five. Excellent. Beautiful. Median is the middle value after you arrange them in order of size. Well done, folks. So let's quickly get the answer down. So the median value for that one is going to be 5 kilometers, isn't it? Remember, it's not 5. It's 5 kilometers. They want to answer in meters. meters. Remember, this here is 5 kilometers. So we can write here 5 kilometers. Meters is? 5,000. 5,000. So we do not write down 5 as the answer. 5,000. We have to convert into meters. Beautiful. Lovely. Let's move on to question E. I'm going to rub off, uh, I think I'll rub off this side instead. If you need so. If the distance is uh, 5 miles, uh, okay. But I'm gonna need to rub off this side, folks. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But, uh, uh, we don't need that anymore. I don't wanna rub off the whole page. Okay, question E now. If the distance of the cross country run is 5 miles, how many days of the week did Mark run more than this distance? So done by miles now. Hello? And we got our question in Kilo kilometers. So how many days did you run more than 5 miles? Well, it wasn't that day, was it? So we need to now work out, change these into miles and then compare it. How do we change them into miles? We multiply it by 1.6. Okay, what's 5 times by 1.6? I'm sorry, uh, no. We got 5 miles is 1 miles 1.6 kilometers. Okay, hang on one second. Oh, look. Okay, hang on one second. A bit more tidying up to do over here. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to work out what 5 miles is worth in terms of kilometers. How do we get from 1 mile to 5 miles? We need to work out 5 miles. 1 to 5, what do we do? Time by 5. And 1.6 times by 5 now. 1.6 times by 5. What's 1 time by 5? 5. And what's 0.6 times by 5? 3. Okay? 0.6 times by 5 is 3. So 5 miles is worth how many? So, right here. so 5 miles is what we, our target is approximately equal to 8 kilometers. So we are looking for that number. Which one had more than 8 kilometers? Not this one. Not this one. 
Not this one? Well, is that one good? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. What that one? No. That one more than 8 kilometers? No. That one? No. So for question E, the answer will be nice and simply 1. So you put 1 in the box over here, and we have finished that question. Done. Lovely. Okay. Question number 2. Which shape has the fewest line, lines of symmetry? Okay, for question number 2, the answer is E. E. Why? Because it has no lines of symmetry. Okay, the answer is E. Which two shapes have the same number of lines of symmetry? The answer is going to be B and let's put the lines of symmetry in, show you what it is. So we have one which is from here to, whoops. Yeah, and. Okay, so the both got one line of symmetry, so the answer is going to be B and C. Excellent. Mark the shape that display only one order of rotation on symmetry. Okay, for question C, the one that have only one order of rotation on symmetry is going to be Nine. the same answers. I'm sorry. B and C. C. That means when you turn them around, they only look like themselves once in one complete turn. That's B and C. A will look like itself four times in one go, in one turn. D will look like itself five times in one turn. E will look like itself how many times? Twice in one turn. So the only ones that will have one order of symmetry, question two, will be B and C again. Okay, hang on a second. Right, next question. Question D. What is the sum of the interior angles in shape B? Now, first of all, somebody tell me the name of shape B. Shape B is called a trapezium, and the general name for it is a quadrilateral. Okay, so our four-sided shapes always have an angle sum of 360. So, any quadrilateral will always have an internal angle sum of 360. Okay, question E. In shape B, a trapezium, if x is 20, what size of angle y? Let's get rid of this first of all. Okay. Okay, right. Now, this is a very special type of arrangement. Okay. Hang on a second. In a parallel lines here. Okay, right. Okay, right. In question E, in this trapezium, I'll, I'll put this here, C. Okay, this she said we have a, this here we have parallel lines. Parallel lines are very important. And that gives a special type of, of situation. These angles here, angle Y and angle X, we call these angles supplementary angles. They both add up to 180. So they're supplementary angles. Okay, and so X add Y will give you as an answer of 180. Let's, uh, let's put some values in now. What is the value of x? x is equal to? So 20 add the y value okay is equal to 180. So we can now quite quickly and easily work out the y value. So 20 add a number gives you 180. That number has to be what? 160 degrees and that's done. So 160 degrees goes into here. And that's what angle Y will be equal to. And that's the end of that question. We would like the question number three. Now here you go. So here we have, there are 12 balls in a box which fit into three categories. Black, white, or spotted. If Mike picks a ball at random and replaces it, what is the probability that the first ball to be picked is white? So first of all, we have one, two, three, four. We have four white balls for number for A. Four white balls out of a total of how many? Twelve. So question three A is four out of twelve. So uh, Iman, what can I do with the four out of twelve? I can simplify it by dividing by four. Four is the highest common factor that gives us an answer of one third. Lovely, beautiful. Question B now, Maniba. Uh, what is the probability that the first and second ball to be picked are spotted? 
before both are replaced. Okay, right. So the probability of the first ball being spotted, what's the probability of the first ball being spotted? How many spotted balls do we have? Two. Two. So where are they? They are this one here and that one. So let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the mathematics. So we have two out of twelve is the probability of the first ball being spotted. Then he takes another one out. Now, once you take one spotted ball out, how many spotted balls do you have left over now? And how many have you got left altogether in the total? Eleven. Eleven. Now this is a bit more of an advanced probability question, which you find more like in the GCSE paper. Okay, this is the first one, second one, because they haven't put them back in yet. Take one out, and then another one out. So we now need to work this out. So we have 2 over 12 times by 1 over 11. Can we cancel? Divide that by 2, divide that by 2. Times the top numbers out, 1 times by 1 is 1. 6 times by 11 is 66. So the answer will be 1 over 66 is the correct answer. But what does it mean before going to the place? So, one's taken out first, and then another one's taken out, and then they put back in. That's why we have a different probability here. So the first one is 2 out of 12. Now you've taken one out, you've got 11 now, and you've got one of them left, so the probability's changed, and involves us multiplying. So the probability here of the first spotted, and the probability of the second one being spotted. Okay, and and the probability means multiply. Probably first spotted. Time for the probability of the second one being spotted. That's what we've done here. Okay, we happy with that? Yeah. Move on to the next part. Okay, part C. What is the percentage chance of picking a black ball first? Now, let's just clear this, this hair bit. Make it nice and clean. Right, how many black balls do we have first of all? Six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six black balls. Probability of a black is equal to 6 out of 12. And 6 out of 12, it will cancel down to a half. And they want to know the percentage. You all know the half as a percentage is 50%. If you don't know that, you shouldn't be doing the test. So a half, if uh, you take any fraction to a percentage, just times it by 100. It will make it equivalent to hundreds. Hang on one second here. So, we said earlier that a half is equivalent to 50%. That's over here. Question, part, we're on part D now. Okay, here we go. What is the probability of picking one black ball and one white ball on the first two rounds before both are replaced? So this is a similar question to what we just done over here. So let's do the full mathematics in the GCSE style. Because I teach GCSE maths, and this is a GCSE style question. It's called without replacement. So here we go. So the probability is right done. Probability of, what's the first one? Black. Black. And the keyword here is? And. And. And the pro next one's going to be probability of a? White. White. Remember, what did I say here? Yeah, without replacement, yeah? So we expect the fractions to change. Now, what do we know? What does the and mean in probability? It means? Times. Times. Okay. What's the probability of the black one? What did we say it was? Four. It was four? Is it four? Four. No, what was it? Six. Six. Yeah. Six out of? Twelve. Twelve. And what's... Now, once we take in the one black one out, six out of twelve, how many do we have now? It was twelve originally. Six. We take the black one out now. Now we're going to have... Forget the black one. We're doing white now. But how many... How many do, uh, balls do we have all together? We originally twelve. We took a black one out, how many balls do we have now? 11. Eleven. So the bottom number changes from 12 to a? Eleven. Eleven. How many white balls do we have still the same? Which was how many? Four. Four. So the top number doesn't change, but the bottom number does change. The bottom number does change. This is GCSE style probability. I don't know what you're doing on this paper, but never mind. It's here, we'll do it. Okay, now we're going to simplify it. Okay, give me one second, folks. Right. Can we cancel, folks? Can we cancel? Yeah. We can cancel which direction? Uh, Vertically. Yeah. 6 divided by 6 is? 12 divided by 6 is? 2. Can we cancel diagonally now? Yes. 
Okay, two and the four we cancel diagonally. So two divided by two is? One. Four divided by two is? Two. Two. Let's multiply the top numbers. So you have one time by two. Two. Over. A one time by? Eleven. Which is equal to? Two. Eleven. So two divided by eleven, that should be the answer to question three. Part D. And there's a mistake in this one. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, I'm sorry for also a little bit of a, uh, little bit of a moment there. Now, what we worked out was the probability of a black and probability of a white. Okay, there's also, the question was, yeah, picking one black and one white. We can also get them in also in the reverse order as well. So we could get also the probability of a white and then the probability of a black as well. And that will also give us another 2 out of 11. So what we do here, if we get this 2 out of 11, and this 2 out of 11, because it's, it's going to be either this or that combination, so that will give us a total of 4 out of 11. So, sorry, there wasn't a mistake, just we missed out of one half of the question. We hadn't considered both options of how we could get the white and black. Okay, the question goes, a black and a white. You get either black first and white, or the white first and then black, out of the two possibilities, and that will give us a total answer. Okay, lovely. Let's move on to the next question. We need some space. Oops, uh, wrong one. Okay, here we go. Let's do this all out. So we're looking at four question E now. So it's question three E. Okay. What is the probability that the first three balls to be picked are all black before they are replaced? Okay, so now this is going to be what we've just been doing. Probability of a black and the probability of a black and the probability of a black. Now, what's the probability of our first black? What's the probability of our first black one? Six out of? Twelve. What's the probability of my second black one? Five out of? Eleven, because we've taken one out. And the third one? Four out of? Ten. Ten. And what do the ands mean in probability? It means times. Okay, right, here we go. So this is the calculation. First black, second black, third black. First one, second one, third one. You started with 12, we take one out, we have 11. Take a second one out, we have 10 left over. We had six blacks first, and one was taken out, five left and four left. That's how we did it. Right, we need to multiply them, cancel them, and see what we can do. Okay, 6 divided by 6 is? 12 divided by 6 is? 5 divided by 5 is? 10 divided by 5 is? 2. 2 divided by 2 is? 4 divided by 2 is? 2. And let's start multiplying this number down the top now. Let's see what we've got. So 1 times by 1 times by? 2. 1 times by 1 times by 2. Okay, we don't need brackets, it should be alright. And the bottom we got 1 times by 11 times by 2. 1 times by 11 times by 2. So that will give us what? 1 times by 1 times by 2 is? Well, can these two cancel off here? They can't, can't they? Yeah, cancel these two off here as well. So 1 times by 1 is 1, 1 times by 11 is 11. So what do we have over here? 1 over 11. Oh, right, here we go. So we said 1 time by 11, what did you say was 1 time by 11 was? 11. So 1 time by 1 on the top was 1, and 1 time by 11 was 11. So question 3E is 1 over 11, that's the end of that question. Let's put the answer down here. Some of your parents have come first, but we just kind of quickly finish stuff off here. Okay, that's love. Okay. Question 4. James is going on holiday to USA for 3 weeks. He goes to his bank to exchange money from pounds to sterling. The exchange rate is that. One pound was one point six dollars. His bank does not charge him commission. James wants to change three fifty pounds into dollars. How many dollars is that basically? So what do we do? So if you do three hundred and fifty, multiply that by what? One point six. Okay? Which is like saying three hundred and fifty times by one. Add 
350 times by 0.6. What's 0.6 as a fraction? Um, one ten. Six tenths. Please. Six, yeah. 0.6 is six tenths. Yeah. What's 350 times by one? 350. Okay. Now let's do 350 times by six tenths. So divide that by 10, divide that by 10. Okay. So we've got 35 times by 6. What's 35 times by 6? Let's quickly work it out. 35 times by 6. So 5 times by 6 is? 30. 3 times by 6 is 18. 18 and 3 is? So that will give us... Oops, just gone off the screen. Sorry about that, folks. Let's add them up. 350 at 210 gives us what does it give us? Sorry about I'm squeezing into the corner of the screen, folks. Sorry about that. It's just kind of gone off the page there. Apologies. Okay. 560. Okay. Right. Let's recap that technique. 350 times by 1 point is. What do we do first? We multiply everything by 1. one which is 350. Then we multiply everything by 0. 0.6, which is the same as 6 tenths. And that was easy for us to work out, like a quick technique. And we got our answer nice and quick time. Next question. That's question A done. Question B. While shopping in New York, James sees a shirt that he likes costing £66. How much does it cost in sterling? So we have to now change $66 into pounds. What do we do for that? We have to do opposite of times by 1.6 is? Divide by 1.6. So we've got 66 divided by 1.6. Okay, so we've got now 66 divided by 1.6. Okay. Now, does anybody know the 1.6 times table? No. <laughs> so we need to make this number into a whole number on board, multiplying by 10. So 1.6 times by 10 is? 16. 16. Is that a whole number now? Yeah. Yes. If you multiply the second number by 10, you have to multiply the first number also by? 10. So that gives you 660. So 660 divided by 16. You just set that, set that up. Bust up technique. Bit of long division coming here now. Okay. Let's add a bit of extra space there for when we do our question. Okay, here we go. How many 16s going to 6? And the answer is? Zero. Remainder? Six. six. How many sixteens will go into sixty-six? And the answer is four. Four. What four times by sixteen that gives us? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. So sixty-six minus sixty-four gives us the remainder of no. two. How many sixteens going to twenty? One. One. What's the remainder? Four. Four. How many sixteens going to forty? Two. two. 16 times by 2 is? Something. 32. 32. Remainder is? 8. Okay. How many 16s go into 8? It's going to be a high number. 2. Now, what would it be 2? And the answer is? 5. 5 exactly. So the answer that we put down here is? 41.25. I'm sorry, folks. I couldn't do that question. It'd be easier. There's an easy method. Um, you know, they're welcome, but that's the technique that we need to use. It's a uh, decimal division, changing to whole numbers, long division. Okay, that's all that question done. Now you go to part D. Oh, sir, okay, sir. I, uh, okay, okay, Harul, mashallah, spot you. I put the answer in the wrong part. That doesn't go here. Where does it go? Uh, up the top. Yes. Okay, thank you, Harul, for spotting that uh, technical difficulty there. So the answer is 41 pounds. And 25 pounds put in the right place over here. Lovely. Good. Thank you for that that one. What question we just going to have? Is that B? Yeah. It's all of B. I need some more space now, folks. I'm just going to rub off this part over here. I can't wipe the screen, folks, because I, I, I wipe all the answers that we got. Do the thing. Okay, lovely. Let's have a look at question C. The same shirt costs fifty pounds in London. How much cheaper is it to buy in New York than to London? 
But we just worked out it's 41.25. So we have to now work out the between these two numbers what do we work out? We have to work out the difference. So we're gonna do 50 pounds, we have to minus 41 pounds and 25 pence. Okay, in this particular question here, we've been asked to work out the percentage. First of all, we're going to work out uh, what the difference is. Because how much cheaper is it to buy their one answer as a percentage? So we said, first of all, 50 minus 41.25 gave us an answer of 8 pounds and 75 pence. That is how much it is cheaper. We have to express this cheapness as a percentage of its original price. So it's going to be 8 pounds 75 so, £8.75 is how much is cheaper by as a fraction of what was the price? £50. Now, if you're going to change that into a percentage, you have to change this fraction into a multiply uh, to change the percentage times it by 100. Are you happy with that? Was A5 looking over here, please? So, this is how much we saved out of the total at the original price 50 times by 100. So, divide that by 50. Divide that by 50. This is the technique for changing this into a percentage. So we've got now 8.75 and we've got to multiply it by 2. 8.75 multiplied by 2. Josefa, can we look over here please? 5 times by 2 is this? 10. 7 times by 2 is 14. Add the 1 on the bottom is 15. 8 times by 2 is 16. Add the 1 is 17. And that is the answer as a 17. 0.50% That is the percentage. Oops, I lost my pen. Sorry about that folks, I lost my pen. I went across onto the other screen. 17.5% Are we happy with that now? So we worked out the difference first. The difference as a fraction of the original price in terms of 100 change into a percentage. And that's question C done. Question D now. The three weeks later when he returns back to London, James has $32 left, which he wants to exchange back to the pound sterling. The exchange rate at the airport is one dollar is worth eighty pence. If he changes that at the airport and an airport charges ten percent commission on the transaction, how much money will James get in pounds sterling? This is I think this is more of a GCC paper than a, a, a level plus paper. The more I look at it, it's kind of the complexity of the questions they're giving you here. So okay folks, we need to do thirty-two dollars and we need to multiply that by 0.8 pounds to change it into pounds and then we, once we get change into pounds we need to minus on that how much percent? 10 percent of it as commission we lose it okay let's get cracking now I want to do 32 times by 0.8 what's the quickest way of doing that? we're going to do that like this 32 0.8 change into fraction for me please folks 0.8 of the fraction is 8 over 10. Lovely. We are now beginning to start thinking properly. Time by 8 over 10. Okay. Now, and then we have to work at 10%, isn't it? Okay. Now, let's see if we can cancel it down. So this is the first part of the calculation. We're working out 8 tenths of the money. And then what do we do next? we got to then knock off 10%. How do we work out 10% of something? We multiply it by... One ten to work at ten percent. So let's work it out. So we have thirty-two times by eight times by one divided by one times by ten times by ten. Let's do some cancelling. So okay, let's change color. Okay, what we can do? What can we do here, folks? So eight divided by two it will give us four. Ten divided by two will give us five. 32 divided by 2 will give us and 10 divided by 2 will give us so we're cancelling diagonally okay, can we cancel any more at the moment? can we cancel any more? no, no. so top will be 16 time by 4 time by 1 the bottom will be 1 time by 5 time by 5 what's 16 time by 4? and what's 5 time by 5? Okay, but that is how much you will have to give away. That's your ten percent basically, and then we can work out sixty-four over twenty-five. Okay, folks, this particular method, this uh, this route I've gone on, is led us to a more 
a slightly more complicated technique. I'm just going to literally go back a few steps and do a different approach on this question. As this question has been done live, okay, we're going to quickly go back and get rid of all this and do it in a slightly more easier method so we don't end up with this kind of nice fraction. I thought we'd get a nice fraction, but we haven't. Let's have a look at this part of the calculation first of all. We're going to do $32 times by 0 0.8. Let's work that out. So, what did we say it was? So, here we go. So, 32 times by, okay, let's put 0.8 is 8 tenths. Okay, let's do it as a, we can do it as a long multiplication as here's technique as well. So, yeah. So, 32 times by 0.8. Okay, who knows the long multiplication? If you want to do it this way. Ready? 2 times by 8 is? 16. 16. 3 times by, by 8 is? 24. Add 1 is? 25. We put a 0 down here for good measure. Okay. Oops. Uh, and then everything done by 0 is just 0. Cut, add them all up. We have one decimal place in the question. So we'll have one in the answer. So, $32 times by 0 0.8 pound gives us an answer of 25 pound 60 is how much you will get. But we have to minus from that a 10%. Okay, he's losing 10%. Okay, what is 10% of 25 pound 60? Okay. To work out 10%, what we do is simply divide it by 10. That gives us, it gives us what? Two pound and fifty six. Okay, right. So twenty five pound sixty minus the ten percent. So we have to borrow here. Ten take with six will give you four. I'll give you nothing. Five take with two will give you three. So that will give you twenty three pound and four pence. Sorry about that slightly longer method, folks. I have quickly adjust it because it's a nice, nicer method. So the answer will be twenty-three pound and four pence. We'll actually what he takes home from the airport after his commission. Oh, yeah. Live now, Bismillah. Question number five: How many, how many vertices does the shape above have? So question number five: The vertices is talking about what? What's it talking about? The corners. Edges is something completely different. So one, two, okay. Three, four. So question number five, part A. We have four on the top and we have four on the bottom. So these three that we can see and the one that's behind over there somewhere. So that will give us how many edges? So vertices, eight. How many edges now? Edges is, edges is, I'll tell you what edges is here. Here's edge. An edge is this. That's an edge. Every time two faces meet, we get an edge. So we've got one here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one behind ten, one behind eleven, and twelve. So we've got twelve edges all to together. together. Twelve edges done. Nearly finished. What is the total surface area of the shape of bow? This again is another GCC style question. Because I taught this in my last year's GCC class. Working at total surface areas of cuboids and triangular prisms. This is amazing. Okay, here we go. Total surface area means the surface area of all the sides. So we'll look at the surface area of what? Of side 1, side 2, side 3. So we'll look at the area of 1, 2, and 3. And what we'll do with the, with the areas, what we'll do them? Double them. What's the area of side 1? Let's work it out. Area is equal to length times by width. Length is 12 and the width here is 6. So 12 time by 6 will give us an answer of? 72. Okay. The area of part 2. 12 times by 4 is the length of time by width. 12 times by 4, okay, is equal 48. to? 48. 48. And number 3 is 4 times by 6. Length is 4, the, the width is 6. 24. So 4 times by 6 24. is equal to 24. So let's add them all up now. So 2 at 8 is 10. 10 at 4 is 14. 
7 at 4, that will give you 11, at 2 is 13, 13 at 1 is? 14. 14. So that gives us 144, you have to double it now, yes? Crazy. Because there's two lots of these. So we've got two lots front here and the back, top and bottom, this way. So 4 down by 2 is 8, 8, so the answer is? <coughs> what is the volume? That's a nice, lovely question. Now, volume for a cube void is simply length time by? Time by? Height. So the length is equal to? 12. The width is equal to? 4. And the height is equal to? So we do 12 time by 4 time by 6. 12 time by 4 is? 48. 48. And then we have 48 time by 6. That's so 8 times by 6 will give you? 4 times by 6 is, that will give you 248 is the volume. Okay, hang on a second. For, pardon me. Okay, you're, giving me, you're feeding me wrong answers. For, for that's what you should, that's what I'm going to say. Stop there right there.